Shit. It worked. You... Are you real? Possible. Not possible. To be here. For you to be here. Well, I'm here. We're here. I had to see you again. Welcome back guys and let's talk some more Legion. I've already posted my review for episode 3 a couple of days ago, but then there are also the theories. So we've got a lot of theories on who the villain of the season might be. A lot of people are in agreement that the villain is probably David. That future person that caused that future plague that Sid warned against is David. But that is not all there is to it, because there are a lot of variations and iterations of that theory. My favorite of them is that David is pretty much the Shadow King. It is not as simple as that though, so I'm going to be discussing this in detail in a moment over here. But that is not the only name. David is not the only name out there for the villain of the season, and neither is the Shadow King. There are also suggestions of name like John Sublime, aka Dr. Sublime, or Mr. Sinister. Now because Legion is more complicated for us to just discard any theory or any idea like a know-it-all, I'm gonna say that these theories are viable, even though they do rely on the idea that John Hamm, the narrator of each and every episode, is basically one of these two villains. But if you were to ask me of my own opinion, I'd say that I don't think John Hamm is the villain of the season, not the narrator John Hamm at least. So what I'm thinking over here is if John Hamm were to be the villain, then there would be a character on the series portrayed by John Hamm, but he would not be the same person that's narrating each and every episode. But yeah, that's just one man's opinion. I think the narrator, all he's doing over here is not being part of the story, but rather someone with insight on the story. Someone who's able to tell us little bits and pieces that by the end of the season, or maybe even before that, when woven together, could give us some sort of a full picture of what's going on. But let us talk some of those David theories. So number one, David is the villain. He kills the Shadow King, he breaks down and he goes full on villain. What he does over there is he basically causes the plague because over the years he's absorbed so many personalities and he's going to let one of those out and that personality is what's going to cause the plague. Now one thing you need to remember here as well is that while David has the ability in the comics to absorb personalities and disperse them, there happens to be those instances in which some of these personalities kind of escaped him and he had to go after them and reabsorb them. So pretty much end with this, we've got three scenarios over here. We've got the scenario that David pretty much released a personality after he killed the Shadow King and that personality of David is pretty much what caused the plague in the future. There is as well the scenario that David unwillingly released said personality. One of those personalities basically escaped David and caused all the trouble in the future. But there is as well the third and final option when it comes to this theory. One of these personalities took over David, took control of David and his body and pretty much this personality is what ended up wreaking that kind of havoc in that dystopian future. Now we gotta consider as well that it could be a mix and match of any of these two scenarios. Like for example, in order to kill the Shadow King, in order to have the courage to kill the Shadow King, David decided to give another personality control and that personality just took over and never let go. So in this situation, you would have an on his own volition kind of situation going on at first, but the continuation of which ends up being something that is forced on him. Now do remember over here that what I'm presenting might not exactly conform with the comics because what I'm presenting over here is pretty much in the spirit of the comics but the rest of it is based on the fact that this is a TV series and it might do things a little bit differently. Now before I move on to what I'm leaving for last, I'm leaving best for last over here which is my favorite David theory, let's talk about another name real quick. Admiral Fukuyama. So Admiral Fukuyama is this mysterious person, this person communicating through those vermilion. No one on the series really knows what his intentions are. No one watching the series knows what his intentions are. I mean the man is watching everyone. He's looking at and into everyone, analyzing their moves, analyzing who's saying the truth and who's not saying the truth. So as of now, that kind of leaves him as one of the more mysterious characters on the series, so we're kind of still waiting to understand him and understand his intentions. But speaking about best for last, this theory is not really the best theory in terms of probability and for reasons that I'm going to mention in a moment here. So pretty much someone suggested this in the comments, that David 
killed the Shadow King, killed Farouk, and pretty much after he did so, he absorbed his personality. But then the personality of Farouk took over and caused that plague, so pretty much the villain over here would be a combination of both Farouk and David. But let us real quick over here go over the arguments with or against all of these theories about David being the villain of Season 2. So number 1, this argument is a with argument. Pretty much on episode 2, in his conversation with future Sid, she does tell him... You're... how you were... in the past, before... sweet. Now this statement could basically indicate a severe change to David. Now other than sour, the only two other words that I could think of as opposites of sweet that could describe a person are bitter or hideous. So if she meant hideous, if he would have turned into this hideous person, then he might have been the one to have caused the plague. But there is as well number two, using this very same statement to kind of prove the opposite. Pretty much she could have meant he has gone bitter, and if he has gone bitter then there is a loss of hope involved, and if that were to be the case then he could have gone bitter because of what happened, because maybe he blamed himself, killing the Shadow King might have been the cause of all this ruin. But number 3, there is this other part of the same scene on the same episode that kind of indicates that this might be the case, so this argument is basically with. Am I dead in the future? Wait, am I dead? It's complicated. Now once again, this argument could be used as a with and as an against, but the reason I'm more inclined to use this as a with is because of the fact that Sid kind of repeats these kind of statements. There is the one from number one and there is this one as well. Could David just be this bad person in the future, someone she wouldn't have expected to see again, let alone in the sweet nature of his as she does refer to it? Number 4, when David tries to ask Sid about the cause of that plague in the future, she tells him it doesn't matter, she tries to discard his question, make sure that she does not answer it. Now when you think about it, in these kind of situations, with these kind of storylines, people do not want to tell you about the future because they would fear of the outcomes of you knowing of the future. But Sid is right there, she is telling him stuff, she is telling him he should not kill the Shadow King. She tells him that in this future he did kill the Shadow King and she tells him a few other things. Yet she does seem to stop at this one point, she does not want to tell him who caused the plague. So this person could be someone he knows, like Fukuyama for example, which is a possibility by the way, or David himself. She's trying to shell David, shelter David from the truth about what he is to do in that kind of timeline. But number 5 though, and this one happens to be against the idea that a combination of both David and the Shadow King caused that plague in the future, that David absorbing the personality of the Shadow King and then the personality of the Shadow King taking over would have caused that plague in the future. Check it out. But we don't have long. It's coming. What's coming? Uh, Farouk? No, he's dead in my timeline. You killed him. When? About a week from now. In the desert, you bashed his brains in. Huh. Then who? It doesn't matter. So unless once again Sid is lying on this bit of the scene in order to protect David's feelings, in order to make sure that he does not realize what he does in the future, chances are that avoiding the murder of the Shadow King at the hands of David is all about protecting the world, is all about making sure that the Shadow King, no matter how many people he kills, does help them stop what is bigger, whatever it is that is to come that will kill a lot more. Now in this case it could still be David but it does open the door for other theories like John Sublime, like Mr. Sinister and like Fukuyama himself. That does not necessarily mean that John Hamm is any of these, that John Hamm is the villain, that John Hamm the narrator is the villain but nonetheless it does mean that we might have another villain that we have not met yet. But that being said though, my work here is done so let me know in the comments what you thought of these theories, let me know who you think is the villain of the second season of Legion. Now if you do think it is David, let me know why you think it is David and which theory do you think would apply to David. Let me know as well if you think it's John Sublime or Mr. Sinister or any other name from the comics for that matter, just let me know what you think it is. 
That would really help us kind of argue these names in the comments, because if you just throw a name and I don't find a reason why this name should be the case or should be the villain, I'm basically looking at a name and I'm thinking we're just trying to throw names from the comics at characters and hope one sticks. But more importantly, and above all of this, if you do think it is John Hamm, let me know one reason, a single reason, why you think John Hamm, the narrator on the series, who's basically talking more or less about psychology, is pretty much that person. But before you leave this video or browse away from it, please remember to drop it a much appreciated like if you did like its content, and if that were to be the case, always remember to subscribe and enable notifications for my future videos, my live streams, and my community posts. Until I see you next time though, thank you all for tuning in and have a great day.